Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Virtual Engagement Ideas Summit. We have a very special guest today. I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. You know, I've, uh, I've been doing a lot of interviews over the last few weeks, but, but this one in particular uh, is a special one because we have here a VIP, as they say in the biz. Uh, we have Eric Lambert, who is the Executive Director of the Association for the Promotion of Campus Activities since 1994. Uh, he is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the company and oversees the APCA school's associate and financial operations. These are big responsibilities. Mr. Mr. Yeah, Mr. yeah. I have to stop us. I forgot to turn the light on in front of me. Now I've got the light. You got the light. You look better. I mean, you looked good before. All right, thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> Continue and, and let's just keep that as it is. That's fine. I think so too, because it's just the reality of where we are in the world. We're working in a new space. It's we would never walk out on stage uh, and we would we would know if the spotlight weren't on, right? Or we would know if the microphone weren't on. But in the virtual space the crowd wouldn't know your microphone wasn't on, to be honest. Yeah, I'm a loud mouth. I get it. I get it. I get it. So let me just say this. Um uh, to, to finish your intro, you're from New Orleans, but now you live in Tennessee uh, with your wife Heather. And you are a professional comedian and a reserve deputy for your local sheriff's department. Could this really be true? This is true. This is so true. when you go, like, have you been- you've, done your research, sir. You've been deputized. And so that means like, if you're making, uh, uh, if, you're, if you're responding to uh, an event. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Bring, do you bring comedy with you in that moment? Do you bring, bring the jokes? Uh, let me explain this a little bit. Uh, first okay. of all, yes, I am a professional comedian. I work at a place called the Comedy Barn for the last 25 years, although uh -huh. now it's all kind of on hiatus for me with all of the COVID going on. Uh, but uh, the actual reason I got into the Sheriff's Department was uh, because I, I did a lot of uh, self-defense training in Aikido. And uh, in that, I got to meet a lot of different people who were in law enforcement, and they asked if I wanted to become uh, reserve deputy and help with some different things that reserve deputies do. Uh, for instance, when uh, domestic violence uh, victims will go to court, it's very difficult to testify in that situation. We will escort them. You know, it helps to keep the other deputies on the road and doing traffic and things like that. And uh, we'll, when we take uh, families to go see their family in jail, we'll take them in there. We'll explain to them, you know, daddy's not home right now, but he's here and he's trying to be better. And we found that keeping family units together like that has really assisted in, in, uh, in uh, stopping recidivism and having the crimes happen again and, and, and uh, has really having a family attachment helps. So we volunteer our time to go and do those kind of things, but uh, we're fully deputized. We have to go through mm -hmm. the same training as, as mm -hmm. that. That's, well, I did. I did not know that about you, but it, it makes a lot of sense to me because of the, the, the care that you have for the folks that you work with makes absolute sense that you have the same care for your community and the folks who live in it. So understanding me, me thinking that you ran around on a horse with a badge on is my version of Eric Lambert. So thank you for that. And thank you for all the hard work that you put into um, making the connection between the campuses and the associates and bringing us all together. Um, what, what is, what has been your, what, what is your big, why, why, why are you doing this? Why did you start this? Um, why do you, care about all of us well when i began doing comedy and started entertainment i guess um i saw it as really kind of uh feckless useless sometimes and it, it kind of made me despondent i love doing stand-up but i really didn't like performing in clubs because you're not really changing anyone's mind there you're really just kind of like talking to people most of whom are probably somewhat inebriated at least mm -hmm. and nothing sticking and so I started to work in colleges because I could actually get my opinions out and I could talk with people and I could change people's minds at a point where they're actually malleable and wanted to be changed. And I could talk to them about tolerance and I could talk to them about a lot of the different ideas that I had that I wanted to get across as an entertainer. And later on, uh, I found there was a void in a lot of schools that couldn't afford to go to conferences or do anything. And so we, we made a very low cost alternative, a low cost alternative, mm -hmm. say that 10 times fast. <laughs> and uh, I began to do things that had uh, learning outcomes to them that yeah. in some way help with that. Because when I was at LSU, we had this wonderful lady named Shirley Plakitas, who was the director of our union and later on became a, uh, the executive head honcho at a ACY. 
Yeah. And she told us everything you do has to, has to teach somebody something. Every kind of program we do, everything has to teach someone something. And uh -huh. we've been very fortunate to move those learning outcomes into the entertainment venues yeah. uh, at campuses around the country and to try to attach those learning outcomes. And now uh, the biggest challenge of our career, of course, is COVID. And so yeah. attaching learning to that. You know. what, is, what is keeping you up at night right now? What's your, what's your big worry? Uh, mostly, uh, my biggest concern is that, uh, student activities will be seen as something that is not what it is. What mm -hmm. it is, is the urgency and importance of engagement that absolutely has to be, uh, mm -hmm. out there. Did someone just come in the room? Huh? Yeah. That, that happens. When stuff like that happens, folks, you just I don't, I'll get back to that question, but, um, let, let me, um, I, I, one, one of the things I love about this platform is that we're, we're so beautifully vulnerable and we're at home, right? We, we are at home. We're at home. No, it, it, no, it, it, it is, it is. I've had other interviews with children in the, in the interview. I, I'm, I'm doing some interviews with, without my stage, right? And, and the stage really, for all of you that know, it's just a big piece of gray paper, a light, a guitar, and I'm using my computer microphone and my computer, um, camera on purpose because yep. I want I want I want everyone to know that we can do this like we can do this okay now back to where we, where were we where were we what keeps me up at night what keeps you up at night what's what's keeping you up at night right now yeah let's see one more time for that no, I'm, not, I'm gonna I'm, I'm not no, I'm gonna put that in there man. <laughs> like, uh... I'll send you the raw footage Whatever, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there's the comedic side of you though this is the best okay. all right well, no, I asked you the question, um, Eric, what keeps you up at night? What keeps you up at night? What's, what's making you roll around and uh, toss and turn? Um, I guess the thing uh, with my professional life with APCA that keeps me up at night is the concern that student activities is going to be considered uh, bells and whistles. Uh, mm -hmm. Because right now people are afraid. And the first thing they do is try to make cuts and say, where can I save money here, save money there? And the first thing they want to cut is something they don't fully grasp. And usually engagement falls under that. When you mm -hmm. talk about the faculty and you talk about the higher administrations, a lot of times engagement is not uh, is emphasized, I think, as it should be. And suddenly engaging these students and, and developing a campus community that's supportive, that's, that's someplace they want to be, uh, that importance is lost in us. And all this theory of Aston and all the theory that Chickering put out and all these ways we're trying to develop students ties into that. Mm -hmm. So I'm afraid that engagement will suddenly become on the chopping block very quickly and people will forget that you can get an education in your basement, but you can't make a citizen anywhere except an environment that is inclusive mm -hmm. and really, really has an engaging atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And have you seen some of the advisors uh, uh, around the country helping make that connection to their administrators, like presenting, uh, you know, almost like a, a reason for existence? Not that you and I need to see that. We know that there's a there's a purpose behind the engagement aspect of it because it helps keep students in school. More students graduate from college who feel connected and engaged and 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 can be part of a, a community, not just academic, right? But are there, are there folks out there in the country who are, are, are leading this march or are you uh, as an organization helping with the language that we could use to inspire the presidents of all the colleges to, to prioritize what we do? Absolutely. Uh, we have like a weekly series of webinars that we put out there called Pivot Your Programs. We're trying to emphasize the importance of engagement even in a virtual environment. And right. as we put that out there, we tie this into actual student theory. We bring in people from uh, NASPA. We bring in people from the Chronicle. We bring in uh, wonderful administrators and people from corporations that support uh, collegiate engagement efforts. And what we do is we try to make the case for virtual engagement being an absolute necessity. And it is because if you don't engage these students now, it's gonna become even more of a problem than when they were on campus, because if they're off campus and they're not engaged, you know, there, there's no difference in going to your school or reading a book and getting the same mm -hmm. information or mm -hmm. just picking up a, a degree from any of hundreds of online options. And that's the web, that webinar is called Pivot, the Pivot webinar, Pivot Your Programs? Yes, Pivot Your Programs. It's in the members oh. area at apca.com. So if okay. you're a member, you can go and see all those recordings. 
during the COVID uh, crisis, the initial first four or five months, we had them up there as of July 1st, you have to be an APCA member. Uh, and you can see all the recordings. But you can see the live recordings on Thursdays at 2 p.m. and Eastern. Right. Anybody can see those. Anybody right. can go and uh, I think the easiest link is to go to Facebook at our uh, APCA online engagement group on Facebook. Right. Or yeah. usually you can find it on your group, the Virtual Ideas event community. Yes, it's often mentioned there. Uh, the, any, anytime that, that that event is happening on a Thursday, we will promote it. Um, if it's happening on a Wednesday, then you know, it's tough to say. We can't promise anything on Wednesdays. <laughs> we'll keep that in mind in our schedule. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't promote too early. No, I, I I don't I didn't mean to put you on the on the hot seat there, but I really think that you spend a lot of time thinking about the bigger picture, right? Whereas a lot of advisors and a lot of artists and a lot of agents are where we're we're micro focused on our own world, right? And you're you're looking at from um, a thirty thousand foot perspective right you're looking at it from not just that one person's job will be saved by pushing us forward but the entire world of student engagement uh, is something that we all need to be working together to to move forward well yeah i mean as an entertainer that used to be in the college market myself i understand how your whole world is am i getting the next gig am i going to be able to put this tour together all that if you're an agent you're looking at it you know and saying well how am i going to keep all my people working and how am i going to advertise and market this and then uh where am i going to get showcases at and all these things and if you're an advisor though and that's where it really comes down to it you're looking at how can i engage this population so they stay on this campus and matriculate how can that happen that's your job. Now, there are the vice presidents who say, okay, well, how can we make sure that we keep everything in budget and everything is going smoothly? And, and how can we make sure that we uh, maintain the focus that the institution needs to have a certain amount of, of, uh, of income and all that? That's, a, that's a, a very important viewpoint from the administration, because if it yeah. weren't here, trust me, everything would close down. Yeah. But the advisors are the ones who actually look at it. What can I do to engage these students? So the way I encourage artists and agents to think of this is think of it from the advisor standpoint, mm -hmm. what they're trying to do, which is engage their students, get them close to campus and keep them uh, feeling like they're a part of a vibrant community, you mm -hmm. know, something mm -hmm. where you engage with that community to really become part of that culture. And mm -hmm. if you're an advisor, please think of it as the fact that all these artists that are coming into this are investing a great deal of money. It's not cheap to get involved in the campus marketplace. So, understand that they're trying to come into it from their viewpoint mm -hmm. as how can I make a living? You know, it's, it's their paycheck. So with everyone knowing the stakes and everyone understanding exactly what's at stake with each other, you can come to a better agreement, a better understanding, and hopefully a longer term relationship. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the virtual realm that we're working in now post COVID? It will never go away. Uh, the genie's out of the bottle. Now that we have seen virtual uh, entertainment put out there by anything from mom and pops to large agencies, uh, it's never gonna go back to where it was because there will be that option now for student activities within mm -hmm. uh, virtual schools, within virtual uh, programs. In other words, if someone's looking to get a degree online and they're completely online, virtual activities that actually engage them with the campus and students on campus and off campus will now become a part of their engagement program to help keep them matriculating. Um, it's going to have a huge influx and it, it, it's going to have a huge effect on uh, tuition. It's going to have a yeah. huge effect on retention. It's going to have a huge effect on which schools they look for because quite a few of these people are going to be learning online and they, mm -hmm. they want to, they know, that if they go to something that will actually enhance their experience past just here's a course, here's a course, here's a course, if they go to something that's more gamified, that's more uh, engaging, uh, mm -hmm. something that they can wrap their own social lives at evenings that they're spending at home, maybe with their kids or something, yeah. while on their phone or on a computer, that's going to be the option they look for. Right. So virtual is never going to go away. It's, it's with us now. It's going to be a huge part of us. Every conference should be a hybrid conference in my opinion now if you're going to go live you should also go virtual if you're a school and doesn't have a virtual program you need to get one whether mm -hmm. it's uh, esports or any other way to go virtual virtual yeah. music virtual comedy right. all these things have to start happening because students are going to demand it now 
Yeah, that's that's good advice to schools who are uh, still still on the fence. And I do know that some folks shut their doors uh, in in March and didn't attempt to do stuff, and maybe are now looking at this next semester. But what what amazing resources we now have, right? What amazing yeah. talent we now have. What amazing technology we have that so many folks have worked so hard to create the programs uh, to make it happen. And I know that. Um, I'm going to rewind a little bit to, 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 the, to your statement about the paycheck for the artists and the agents. I want to help the world understand that, I want to help the artists and the agents understand that they are part of a bigger picture. That it is not just a paycheck, that it is, it is about the student's success and the student engagement and, the, and that the advisors are colleagues and that we're part of the bigger mission and the higher mission is to help these students uh, stay connected to school, right? I understand we all have rent and, and we need to pay our bills, but higher mission needs to really be there, I think, in order to work in this market, in, in, this, in this world that, you're, that you are part of and you have moved forward uh, over the, you know, since 1994, you've been moving this ball forward. Um, so sorry to, sorry to, to jump up on a, uh, pedestal there this is your interview <laughs> well I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far uh I, I tell you um the biggest thing i think for everyone to realize is that it's a community mm -hmm. it's not just a series of gigs this is a community and being in the community you have to make sure that everyone understands how the community functions and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. If you're a comic, there's certain language and certain things that you have to understand are not acceptable really to most college mm -hmm. audiences. If you're a uh, speaker, there are some topics that you will have a very difficult time with in this market. And you also have to remember, you know, are these topics things that will help students to actually develop as a person or develop yeah. practical competence or develop, and I'm quoting some learning reconsidered stuff here, but it would it help them to develop interpersonal, intrapersonal communication skills, an appreciation of the humanities? Uh, would it help them to develop any kind of leadership ability? If you can't answer any of those questions, you're just up there and you're kind of like doing a R-rated kind of like show on, a comedy show, a lot of marriage references. Right. You yeah. know, you have to think about what you're putting into the market. Sure. Sure, um, sure. So this community has its own kind of vibe and its own kind of uh, rules. Yeah. And the other part of that is online now, because we're, we're going online as a community more and more. APCA now has the APCA workplace, and that's just everybody's coming into this wonderful uh, little workplace that we've developed, and all of our schools are kind of hanging out now in a social media environment, and they're all working together. And we've got students working together. We've got uh, agents working with us. We've got uh, Del Suggs and Dave Kelly and some wonderful agents in there and right. all of our regional right. area coordinators from schools all around the country. And we're putting together that community. So yeah. that way, when you come into our community, say for the showcase, that we're going to have a big virtual showcase coming up. You already understand, you know, this is the community. We have set the rules. We've got the boundaries. We know what that community is. So when you, when you understand that the college market's a community and not just a series of gigs yeah. and the community has objectives, then you understand a little better what it takes to really become a member of that community. Yeah, yeah. So focusing on um, on the advisor as the um, probable audience of this interview, right? Focusing on the advisor as the the probable audience of this interview. Mm -hmm. um, how can what what kind of advice can you give about attitude? Well. I think the attitude of a successful advisor right now is going to be one of malleability, uh, ability to change, ability to, to, to be fluid in the situation. Uh, we're all about to hit this huge train wreck called orientation. And mm -hmm. when I say a train wreck, I mean that um, we're all going to have problems within it. There's mm -hmm. going to be one thing at least that is suddenly a train wreck for you that you planned and you thought you had covered. And then there's a virtual issue. I don't know if the Zoom went out. I don't know if you they changed the different uh, time structure to be wrong with what you had in mind. I don't know if there was a uh, some kind of entertainment component that went kablooey. Something's going to happen. It's going to be a train wreck. And as you start hitting train wrecks, starting with orientation, learn that you have to go with it. And you have to both give and expect malleability, flexibility, 
the ability to reschedule if necessary to explain this happened, but we're going on. And also the ability to try to make it as foolproof as you can. So prepare for the best, but expect the worst. Because I really believe if you prepare for a good experience and that's what's in your mind and you stay flexible in it, you'll get the best possible experience but prepare for those bad moments. Right. So be ready, be flexible. Right. Yes, the Zoom's gonna go out. Yes, they're gonna change the time. Yes, the artist will forget his internet bill and it'll be cut off in the middle of the show. All these <laughs> things are gonna happen. Just be calm yeah. and flexible. And that's the very best thing you can do for yourself and your students. Right, be calm, be flexible. Um, Doug Hall said something the other day that I thought was a really, really, thoughtful and I, and I think that you share his opinion on this is that you know plan with the goal in mind right so the event itself or the tools that you're using themselves aren't the most important thing to happen out of orientation right the uh, the event itself what is your goal for the students right so when th when something does happen can you still accomplish the goal that you had in mind and that is to connect your students to the campus so if something funky happens in a program are we still helping the students connect to campus? Yes, let's keep that as the goal. And um, and like you said, be flexible and adaptable when things go wrong because uh, Murphy's Law, right? Yeah. You know, it it, it but and it, and it's not the end of the world. We should. You see, you you're doing great. We should just switch names and you be Jason Lavasser. <laughs> I'll you be Eric Lambert. I'll be Jason Lewis. Just switch the names. It just looks like a great I'm, interview I had. All right. I'm not a good interviewer, but I'm good you're at it. a wonderful interviewer. You, you're all right, you ask me, ask me a Keep question. Going. You're doing good. Oh, no, you asked me a question. All right. I'll uh, ask you a question. Yeah, right. okay. I'll ask you a question. Uh, right. uh, what, with all the things that are being posted, all these great virtual event ideas on, on yeah. this Facebook group that you've created that took off, what do you think are the top three? Oh, come on. Come on, uh, man, top three. I don't think I don't think that's so I'm, I'm starting to think more in the in the goal oriented, which are the ones that bring students together the best. Right. And the ones that I've been involved in have been very much um, uh, synchronous, where there's engagement, where the students have to be actively participating, where they're not passive observers, where they're part of the event. Right. Those are my favorite, where the students have to interact and the students get to interact with each other, but that they're not just passive consumers of something they're participating so i'm going to name drop okay do it do it Ed, Ed, i just got married four years ago just had my fourth year wedding anniversary happy we anniversary well uh, thank you very much we did it right before the july uh leadership on broadway thing we do every year good and time we brought in uh vincent tinto and vincent tinto was absolutely wonderful but uh myself and dave leanhout sat down with him and we said okay if you had one thing to tell us that we should spread the gospel about of student engagement, what is it? And he looked at us both and said, this one sentence I'll never forget. He said, it's simple. Kids learn when they do it hands on. Mm -hmm. Students learn something when they get hands on with it. That's what engagement's about. It's not about doing something they think is cute and they walk away from. It's about getting hands on mm -hmm. with the students. And you're a great example of hands on, Jason you're actually getting involved with the students and you're bringing the students into the show. So suddenly they're part of the experience. So my advice to advisors, uh, entertainers, students, yeah. student leaders, make experiences yeah. that students can get involved with. They can get their hands into it and they can believe it. You know, they yeah. can become part of it. That's right. what really engages them. Thank you. Can we get back to the, the fact that it's your four year anniversary? Um, yeah, go ahead. So, so uh, one of the other interviews that I did uh, uh, yesterday, uh, we talked about 80s music. And there's an artist named Charday uh, who has this beautiful song. And one of her quotes is, uh, she's singing a love song to, to her, her, you know, her partner. And, and she says, every night, uh, every day is Christmas and every night is New Year's Eve. Is that what life is like with Eric Lambert? I'd say <laughs> every, this is one of those things where you think my wife's going to see this one day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is, I just, I love let's start here. Uh, <laughs> 
Life with me, uh, life with me is a series of putting up with bad jokes. Uh -huh. Life with me is a series of uh, having crazy ideas rambled off to you, and then suddenly everyone in the office scrambling to make that happen. Life with me is uh, uh, listening to lectures about ethics and uh, morals and 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 mm -hmm. listening to a lot about love and listening to a lot about uh, tolerance and and liberalism and also mm -hmm. conservatism and and, mm -hmm. and and hearing lots of different voices because I think that life is made up of experiences and and that life is a marketplace of ideas and yeah. that every single idea out there should be floated so it can be evaluated and and see if it's something that should fit in our society yeah so it's yeah. it's it's kind of a whirlwind that and uh like i say corny jokes yeah. yeah, I mean, but but then and then and then in a way, like every every night is New Year's Eve, every day is Christmas because it's there are there are fireworks of ideas, right? There are gift wrapped there are gift wrapped thoughts that that just get you you just tear them open. You're like, here's another idea, here's another gift for the world. Uh, you, like, you like it? Usually on Thursdays we have pizza. Oh, there you go. Okay. I, <laughs> I don't know. What did it tell you about the fireworks? Fireworks. I just, yeah, I just, I'm just trying uh, to get to know you. I, oh, I, yeah. get, I want I'm fireworks. Gonna, I think is a great, great explanation. I'll tell I you want, this. I, okay. I'll tell you this. When you're married to someone else, who is, uh, my wife is is much smarter than me. Heather uh, Lambert. Uh, she used to be Heather Ashley. She used to work at uh, Amarillo at Amarillo College okay. as the director of student life. When you're married to someone who is uh, intellectually um, just a brilliant companion, and I admire her so much, it's very difficult sometimes to uh, have an exchange of ideas without having to really defend your point and get back and forth on it. And it mm -hmm. seems like fighting, but it's not. It's like the two of us really holding a point until one of us says, okay, uh, uh, I accept that point, or one of us says, uh, we're just gonna have to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. and, then we're happy and just go on to the next thing, you know? Right. I mean, we really, really uh, have a wonderful intellectual discourse with each other, which is fantastic, you know? I, it's, it's so nice to be able to sit and talk with someone at that level that they understand student life and engagement and all yep. these things. So we just love it, you know? But that's a great example for all of us in our disagreements or conversations or discourse with other people in our offices or on our campuses is that it is absolutely okay to challenge an idea, right? It is okay to have, uh, yeah. you know, rather than cancel culture, if, if your family, if you and Heather were, uh, it's my way or, or the highway, the highway would have happened a long time ago, right? It's, it's, it is the discourse and, and, and having somebody question why you're doing something. Or, yeah, you know, a good partner will up your game. Yeah. You know, a good partner will really up your game. Uh, having yep. the ability to be with somebody. Don't, don't spend your life, not one second of it, with someone who doesn't make you a better person and want to be a better person. And it makes you feel like a good person and, and, and makes you feel wanted. Don't, some, don't waste your time with that. I always tell my kids, do what you love to do. Don't ever study anything in school you don't love doing. And, and don't waste your time with any kind of career you don't love doing because mm -hmm. life's too short. You wind up going to something, a job, a school, whatever that you hate in order that you can get home and relax from the job you hate, but be worried constantly about going back to the job you hate so you can then get to the job you hate, hate the job, come back home and worry about being at the job you hate. It's all wretch and no vomit. What will happen is eventually it will kill your spirit. So only do things you love and only be with people that make you feel like you're becoming a better person with them. Awesome. I'm sorry, I got I got my own soapbox. No, that's good. Um, I want to. Yeah, that's why we don't talk much, Jason. Right there, these long, awkward pauses. <laughs> it, it, yeah, you had like, you had me at hello. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just I was really thinking about that. You know, it, it's okay to pause. It's okay to it's okay to bask in a moment of great thought. It it, it really I agree with you wholeheartedly and I've been very lucky in my life to uh, have that have had that encouragement from the time I was young otherwise I never would have been in all those bad bands I was in in high school and the bad bands I was in in college and maybe some bad bands since but for the most part I've been able to and have been encouraged to pursue things that interested me 
right? Well, you're a wonderful example of the college community in that you began, and I remember when you began uh, your career in colleges, mm -hmm. and uh, you, were, you were coming in, you were an entertainer, and you were young, you had that same voice as them, that same experience as them, and as you learn more and you looked around you got the perspective of wow the kids below us didn't know the kids younger than us had no idea that we'd already gone through that and mm -hmm. maybe i can help them and suddenly you became uh, a teacher as mm -hmm. much as an entertainer mm -hmm. and you you managed to pivot your career to where like you you became less about the current uh, music scene and all that as you became more about teaching people about music mm -hmm. and teaching people uh, ultimately about leadership and other things because you saw the perspective and you kept working it. And only in a college marketplace can you have that community that would support you to do that. Sure. You know, sure. you don't become yeah. a stand up comic and then later on become a philosopher that is supported by the mass. That, that doesn't happen. In the, same, in the same community, right? In the exact exactly, same community, yeah. right? Okay, right now we have a global pandemic. Uh, we have a lot going on. There's a lot of crazy things going on. It's a tough time for everybody, but looking back over your career, you've had other moments or have you had other moments where you thought, oh, how am I ever going to recover from this? And how did your, and what, sure. what was it that got you through that? Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, I've had um, some terrible, terrible issues that have happened. Uh, there was a lawsuit that went on for like four years and that was, that was difficult, you know, but got through that. And then yeah. uh, I had a divorce and that was very difficult. Uh -huh. I mean, any major family upheavals um, or any major professional upheavals will do one of two things. It will either temper you or break you. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, right now, I know several agencies who were good sized agencies that have just left the market. Mm -hmm. They decided they didn't want to do it. They no longer wanted to be involved in it. It was just mm -hmm. too unsteady for them and they just left the market. But I know a lot of younger agencies that have adapted incredibly. Yeah well yeah. and have decided they're going to live through this and they're going to become the next phase of what mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. and those are the people that are really going to make a difference in student engagement they're going to usher in right. a new age of stu student engagement right and as we support them and, and we find out who they are um because they're all rising to the top. You look at like Deggy Entertainment is this wonderful Deggy world they've got. Right, uh, right, right. It's been a huge effort by them and I hope it pays off well. And right. uh, Hula Entertainment has a great festival series and you've got mm -hmm. uh, the college agency. You get in trouble naming all these names. No, no, know? that's okay. That's okay. They, this so, is, uh, they, they, we're, we're, Rob we're, Jockel, Dave Ugar, we're, lots of people. We're in a, we're in a, we're in a, we're in a higher ed space in this conversation and it's, it's okay to talk about people uh, in a nice way. That's my yeah, rule. But, um, but as you, as you watch the ones that adapt, yeah. then you see the people that are going to be able to work with you in the community and keep a constant level of adaption. Right. So they will be the long-term people. So as you see people stay in the community and adapt their offerings, those are the ones that are going to be with you in the tougher times. A lot of people are going to come back after this is over, but the ones Correct. that didn't stay in it during this, yeah. you're going to really note that those are the people that had the resiliency to make a difference when you're planning your programs as to whether they're going to stand by you or they're going to stand to the side and watch what happens. Well, this, okay, so let's connect that to the life of the advisor right now, that on, on the individual campus, you um, are going to succeed by adapting and, and, and being resilient and being willing to, to face the new challenges and see how to, how to, how to, how to um, like you said, you, there's a malleability, right? If, if, um, if you're still living in the structure that you lived in 12 months ago, and you're trying to get back to that, uh, that, that, that get back to that won't happen. It's, it will, it's gone forever. Yeah. Right? So yeah. It's, it's time now to, it's not, it's now, it's time to stop sipping tea on the couch and waiting for, for yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's time to pull the covers off and get up and, and start moving. Right. Yeah, exactly. 2019 was the last live year. That's uh -huh. going to be everything all live and anything uh -huh. done online is just some kind of a thing you have to do for credit right. or whatever. No, uh, 2020 and on is going to be a uh, hybrid and eventually will be more virtual than hybrid or, or live because uh, live events will never go away. They're always going to be around, mm -hmm. but the affordability and the, uh, the mass scale you can do mm -hmm. uh, virtual events on is going to definitely be a huge factor, especially yeah. the cost because schools are getting smaller. The school population is going to shrink. Yeah. It is not going to stay the same size as it's been. It's going to drastically 
diminish because the baby boomers waited a long time to have kids. Mm -hmm. So the next big batch will probably be looking sometime around 2027, 2028, that you start getting another big batch of schools. But there's a dearth of eighth and ninth graders out there right now. Right. There's not as many as there used to be. So there's going to be a lot more competition. There's going to be competition for non-traditional students. Everything's going to change. And those right. people need to be engaged in an affordable and mass produced way. And virtual entertainment is better at that than live entertainment. That's just yeah. a fact, you know? Yeah. A big kudos for using a, an SAT word in your last few sentences. You used the word dearth, which is one of, a, a, you, there's a dearth of middle schoolers, which means a, a lower number, right? A lack of. Yes. Thank you. I know that you're, you're, you have a lawyer in your family, so you use big words at the table. <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of those words I think it's a shame that it's, it's kind of left yeah. the English language when I say it, like whom. Right. You ever heard, hear the word whom? Like to whom was that addressed? Whom, yes. like that anymore. People stopped using those. It's a shame because there's, there's wonderful uh, flourish words like yeah. that in, in right. uh, English language. If you look back and you read over like the 1700s and 1800s how English was used, it's an amazing difference in how it's used today. It really, really is. Even by the most modern scholars. You know, they just, those guys knew how to write. Check mm -hmm. out Alexander Hamilton's writing one day. It'll blow your mind. Mm -hmm. I've heard that name before. Weird. It's been coming up a lot the last few years. My name is Alexander Hamilton. My kids are watching it 24-7. Hey, what was you, well, you you're, you're a huge theater fan. Yes. You're a huge theater fan, and I know that you love Broadway, you love everything about uh, singing and performing, but let's go way, way back. Let's go back to your first performance. Your first performance in elementary school. Oh, wow, yeah, oh. Tell us about that. Man, you really did this creepy homework on me, man. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, kindergarten, uh, kindergarten. I, was, I was Santa Claus. Yeah, I was the biggest, chunkiest kid in the class. Yep. Walked out, fell down on stage, got a huge laugh. Uh, did it every single time after that, got the same laugh. That's when I knew I wanted to be a comedian. That's great. That's great. That's great. So that was, it, it really, it's amazing how, uh, how those moments in life when you're not expecting them can really put you on a trajectory. Well, you know, and it did, and I'm really glad it got me involved with Broadway because Broadway uh, has so much to teach us. If you take a look, every show on Broadway, there is an underlying learning outcome in that show. Uh, yeah. I remember I, I, I took uh, about 100, I think there's 100 students to Sardi's for a luncheon. And we had, as the guest speaker, we had uh, Angel from the first initial of Rent. Uh, and uh, the, the actor whose name, um, why is his name escaping me? Uh, the first act, actor who got the Tony for playing Rent. Wilson Heredia. Okay. So we brought Wilson Heredia in to Sardi's with a hundred students I had at my Broadway experience that we do every summer. And I stood up and I started talking about the man who wrote Rent. And the gentleman who wrote Rent's name was Jonathan Larson. And he died the night before the first production of Rent, the first show. He had this weird aneurysm and died right then. But he had spent all his time becoming this person who could write something like that and he he specifically put time aside every day to write and time every every day to write songs and to do music and then he got right up to the first night and he died and i sat down and wilson Heredia stood up and said and that night we did our show at first it was just going to be a reading but it was so powerful we all put on our clothes and we got out there and mm -hmm. we started doing it on stage and it just mm -hmm. exploded into this wonderful mm -hmm. thing and when it was over, everybody just stood there quietly for a while and somebody yelled, thank you, Jonathan Larson. And it's because he spent his time like that. Right. And then I said, so how are you going to spend your time? What are you going to do with the time you have on campus? And then these 10 people stand up and start singing 526,600. And it was the cast of Rent. Oh, and wow. I brought in the cast of Rent and they were singing 526,800. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they stood there with Wilson Heredia and sang uh, Seasons of Love, the, the theme oh, song. Oh, so cool. So cool. And the, the whole, that's a long story and you can no. edit it down whatever you need. No, I'm not editing a thing on this. I'm, but I really think the, the lesson in that is right now with uh, advisors and folks in higher ed, it's a great time to dedicate even five minutes a day to something brand new. Right, because you never know that first right. thing you hit yeah. might hit. And right. if it's not, if it's the second thing, that's fine. Right. Right. But you put the time into it and you really 
honestly dedicate that time. The time is what makes it happen, you know? Right. And the fact that they could all stand there and just sing that song this guy wrote in his head when he was thinking about how many, how much time do I have yeah. to write yeah. this? You know? right. And uh, it, it was just astounding. And it affected everybody and it brought engagement. It, it, it changed it from just somebody singing a song and sitting down and getting a little clap yeah. to suddenly everybody becoming engaged with it. Do yeah. things that engage the entire room like that, where you bring right. the artist into an, a, a immersive situation with yeah. them. And it brings everyone together, it's wonderful. On the topic of moving forward and inspiration and learning new things and, and, and getting off the couch and moving forward, um, final words of wisdom to higher ed professionals moving into this next semester. Um, again, the first thing is be flexible. It, there's going to be lots of curveballs thrown to you. It's going to happen over and over. Nobody knows. The guy on your campus saying he's got the plan, he doesn't know. Uh, the one who's saying that we're going to try it this way, they don't know. Uh, you, who have done everything and got it all together, doesn't really know. Mm -hmm. Once you get there, the more flexible you can be and introduce all of your programs with the idea of, hey, we're just going to have a fun time. If this happens, this happens. Don't worry about it. It's all going to be great. Mm -hmm. Let's all just be a community together. The ones who mm -hmm. emphasize community and working together, they're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. The ones who expect it to just come off without a hitch. And when it does, well, that's it. It just doesn't work. If you have that attitude, that's what's going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. This is an opportunity to show your flexibility, your ability to roll with the situation, you know, and to make yeah. that work. And demand that flexibility too, from your own administration and your own students. Understand, we're trying to make this work and we need you to be flexible with us to really make it a good experience. Mm -hmm. And when everybody gets in that frame space, you know, yeah. that idea that, okay, we're all gonna make this work together. So that's the first thing is flexibility and, and the importance of that. The second thing that I would recommend would be, um, intentional leadership, uh, intentionally leading them to a goal, you know, mm -hmm. set up goals you're going to try to hit, uh, certain retention goals, certain goals of, of, uh, of assessing your programs, you know, and, and how did I do this and, and stick yeah. with those goals. Try to assess things, try to see how you're helping to retain students and try to make sure that whatever you do, it has something to do with, with uh, keeping a community alive on your campus. So, so uh, sticking to goals and intentionally leading people to the goals. Yeah. And I guess the last thing would be um, uh, collaboration. You know, we're all in a weird new world and faculty mm -hmm. needs to collaborate with staff and staff needs yeah. to collaborate with students and artists need to collaborate with everyone. We have to collaborate together to find out what can we do to be the kind of entertainment or to be the kind of speakers or to be the kind of novelties that you need to retain these students. I look at Carol from Everything But The Mime and here she is doing these wonderful make and takes for, you know, and has learning outcomes with them she's sending to everybody. And they're trying yeah, yeah. to establish how to be a, a part of the whole campus, you know, the livelihood. And it astounds me how well people are adapting to this, this concept. So right. collaborate with the schools rather than try to get the school to book you. If you're yes. just setting up these little showcases and trying to get everybody to book you, it's not gonna work. People are looking for people to work with them. Yeah, yeah. You know, and in and, and a long-term collaboration. So that's my thought. Great advice. Flexibility, goal-oriented, and collaboration. Those are the big three. That's great. And and we learned a lot from you today. Uh, relationships, it's okay to disagree. Uh, well, it's important. You have to. If you don't disagree on anything, yep. you, you never you, you never challenge yourself. Yeah. Yep. Um uh, big picture, the big picture that we're all doing this together. We're all in this together for, um, yes, our own jobs, but also really at the heart of it is for the, for the growth and, and evolution of the student and the, in the goal that we help them graduate, right? Yeah. That we help them feel part of the community, which leads to, uh, you know, based on statistics, uh, the, 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 the option of having choices in life, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. the more, the more, the more that, that, that and, 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 you, and you make this possible through the hard work that you do. So Eric, thank you for being here. Hey, Jason, thank you for, for having me, my friend. I appreciate you and all the work you're doing too. I mean, thank you. Would you be willing to f close out today with a song? Sure. Um, what's your go-to karaoke song? <laughs> uh, Angel from Montgomery, John Prine. Can we sing, uh, can, can we sing an acapella? 
Sure. Do you know it? Just the chorus. Just the, or you know, can you do it as a poem? And can you stare at the camera and and recite the first verse to me as if we're on a date? <clears throat> I am an old woman named after my mother and my child is another child is grown old. Dreams were lightning and thunder was desire. Well, this old house would have burned down a long time ago. Make me an angel that flies from Montgomery. Make me a poster of an old rodeo. Just give me one thing I can hold on to. Believe in this living, it's a hard way to go. And that was a song about somebody who felt like they'd uh, wasted their life with someone that it didn't yeah. matter because yeah. they didn't pay attention to them and they didn't, they didn't want to be with them, you know what I mean? You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't just a sheriff's deputy, man. You ain't just a you ain't just a comic. You ain't just the in charge of a big old company. You got you're a guy with a nice voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I'll be blocking two or threes and three or fives. Right. <laughs> you know, find me at the co-op. I'll be there. All uh, right. Well, thanks again for being here, Eric. I appreciate it very much. I'd yeah. love to give a plug out for uh, apka.com. Come check us out at apka.com and see all the cool things we're doing virtually for the fall. All right. Thanks, man. Take it easy. Thank you, brother. You take care.